Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video we're going to be making a wooden mallet like the one you see right here. Hope you enjoy. The timber I'm going to be using today for this mallet is this piece of jarrah here and I've got a little bit of Tasmanian oak here so I'm going to use that for the handle. So the very first process is to obviously chop the jarrah up into the length we want for the head of the mallet and also cut a few strips of this to laminate together for the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll quickly run you through it, but pretty much we're going to be using all the techniques that we've built up over the past few videos. So you're going to be using rip sawing for chopping up this material for the handle, using your cross cut sawing for cutting up the pieces for the head of the mallet. And we're also going to be measuring out and using knife walls to get the accuracy in doing this mallet head. So we're going to have three sections in this lamination. Each section is going to be 140 millimeters wide. So I'm going to make that mark, come back up against that knife here, make the second mark here, and then obviously we'll jump over and do the third mark. Come back with the square, as we usually would. Light pass, heavier pass, heavier pass. It's a very heavy and defined line. That's what we want. Then obviously off our reference face, which is this front one, come along, wrap around here, do the other side off your reference line again, and then off your original reference edge. And that way we have a nice line all the way around, as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that three more times, then we'll get to the sawing. And I'll be cutting two 30 millimeter sections ripped off this piece of Tasmanian oak for the handle. Once we've got the pieces all chopped out like we have here now, it's time to glue it up. Uh, we don't want to skimp on the glue, especially on the mallet head, because we really don't want it coming apart. But just make sure you've got ample glue.
So, as you saw there, I chopped the uh, head to length, we ripped, cut down for the handle, then laminated it together and just cleaned it up with a hand plane. The next step here is to cut the five degree angle on the mallet face. To do that, I use an angle finder such as this one here. It's just a cheap little angle finder. Now, you can also use a bevel gauge once you've found the angle if you want to use that to transfer it, which I quite often like to do because it's a thicker edge for using the knife against. So, first of all, you've got to find which part is your top. In this case, I like to look at the grain on the top here, so I'm going to put a little T right in the middle here. That's going to be my top. To start with, I'm just going to strike a line. So if you haven't used one of these before, you want to make sure that this part here, which is the fence here, stays flat against the square edge while you're doing this to make sure you got your angle correct because you're going to be using that and referencing off every. This one's got one of these little rocker cam locks. Make sure that's done up nice and tight. Chop the face. So I'm just going to slide it across a touch, but if that was all level and even, you could go right to the very edge. But in this case, I have just noticed that, so I'm just going to move it back a touch. Light pass, medium pass, heavier passes like before. Bend the head around and do the same on this side. So when it comes to sawing an angle like this, I know we haven't really covered any sawing of angles here, but essentially it is still a straight line that's on an angle, so just treat it like a straight line and just saw straight but you're just gonna have to be much more careful and just really follow those knife lines. In this case, we can use the chisel, make our little knife wall as, as it's so called. And now, the other side. We're then going to find the center of the bottom of this mallet. Now, this mallet, I'm not planning to chop right through to the top with the uh, auger bit. We're going to have a round handle that's going to be almost friction fit, held with a bit of glue on the inside of the mallet. So, I'm going to find the center here and auger straight through with my one inch auger bit. So, once that's done, I'll know how far down I need to come on the handle uh, with making the round shank for it to fit inside the head. Because I'm not going to make the entire handle that same uniform shape, it's only going to be the mount that's going to fit inside the head. And, and with an auger bit, because it has a lead screw, you need to have that allowance of that extra height when augering in so you don't come in too far because you don't want to punch through the top. Now, if you did accidentally punch through the top, it's not the end of the world. You would just shape that handle a little bit further, bring it through the top and just wedge it on the top. But for this particular one, and as you can see on this one here, I didn't come through and I like that nice clean look without it being pinned on the surface. You don't have an awl, you can just use a knife like that to give you a nice point. So, when it comes to augering straight into something like this, there are a couple of things you can do. You could run it down flat into your vise like this, and then use a ring on it, which I've seen. I don't personally do that. I, I don't have a ring, so I don't use that process. 
The other way is to use some sort of a guide that you already know is all good square through a smaller piece of wood. Now, it just happens, I have this piece of pine here with the one inch hole already augered through. Now, you can use that to help align yourself or you can use a couple of different squares and do it by eye. Now, I find this is at least the easiest way to start that you get it where you want it and line it right up on the top here. Now, to do that and line it up, if you actually get the piece of wood and get your auger on it, you can actually use that to make sure you're lining up in the center. You can press the little lead screw in and use that to align you. You can see there that all I've done is started and gone down about a centimetre. Now that should be enough to guide me the rest of the way, theoretically. Um, I normally don't have too many problems with that. So now I can actually put it down and auger from my waist, knowing that it's relatively straight. So I just realised that I stuffed this up and I started augering the hole in from the top. So what I'm going to do is we're going to change this design slightly and have it wedged in the top. So we're going to run this auger bit all the way through now, so there's no need to work out the depth of the auger bit. And, you know, I don't want to hide things from you guys here, so when I make mistakes like this, because it does happen, we just work with it and change our designs and whatnot to go with it. So, although it's a pity that it's not like the other one I made, uh, it doesn't really matter because I can show you another technique of wedging the tendon in the top. So, we learn from it anyway. So, as you saw there, I augered through until the lead screw came through the other side and then just came back from the other side. That gives a clean exit on both sides. To shape the handle, what we're going to do is we'll find the center of the top end, whichever end you want the top of your handle to be, and you can mark that one inch circle on the top. I'm just going to use one of these plastic things that actually has a nice little crosshair and a one inch circle, so I'm going to use that once I find the center to actually mark it on my piece. Now to find the center, it's a bit easier. Go from diagonal to diagonal, draw a line, and go the other way. Then, if you want to line up a little circle guide like that, you can just put a little quick crosshair through there, because there's little markers. And there we have our circle that we're now going to use to shape back to. It's the exact same size as in the mallet head just here. Now if you don't have one of those guides you could literally just measure out on a ruler half of the one inch and then use a pair of dividers because I want to shape these two sides back to that circle. We need two lines here and on this circle edge here. So now we've got these two lines, which we're going to use to tape the handle. Now what we do is run these lines to the back corner on the other side of the, the other end of the handle. So I'm running from right up here to the very base corner just here. So I don't know if you can see that, but you've got these lines here. So we're going to obviously concentrate hand planing down this end first, take the material off slowly back, and then we'll run one nice smooth shaving right through to instigate the taper. So now we repeat the process on the other side. So if you look here, what I've done is I've clamped this clamp in my vise here, and obviously I've got the material held on the angle here. Now, this is a technique that if any of you have seen any of the Paul Sellers videos, he does this when he's turning spindles and things not on a lathe like this. 
And the technique I'm following is fairly similar to what he does, which is octagon, and then you take those radiuses off right the way around to get it into the round. But for today, the thing I'm using from his is clamping the clamp and having the piece up here. And that's because it's an angled piece and it's going to be impossible to hold in your face vise unless you've got something like a pattern maker's vise which has got a swinging jaw or if you've got parallel jaws with individual screws you might be able to hold it that way but this is the easiest way and it gets the work up a little bit higher I'm going to go ahead and plan the radi these radiuses in and you can see here I'm going with full strokes and not too deep of a cut So as you can see here, we have brought this down almost a circle and then we can work from here and take these flats out with a spoke shave to get it down into the round. Now we need to know how far down on the handle it's going to come. So we'll get our head here so it's coming just out the top and make a mark. So now we know where that head goes and how far we need to go down to round the handle off for it to fit in onto the head. Now I'm going to be using my spoke shave to shave off those areas and then using this previous piece of scrap with the same size hole in it. And I'm gonna use that to uh, sort of round it off and burnish the wood as it comes down and give me an indication as to when I've got the right thickness and so I don't go too thin where I don't want to. Now, because this is gonna be wedged at the top now, uh, I, I will need it to be a little bit narrower right at the top to allow for that wedge just to splay it a little bit. For a very fine setting on my spoke shave here and I'm going to run up these radiuses like this to start with all the while keeping a view down on the top of the handle. So I'm keeping that view on that circle so I can see when I've got it right. Now I'm taking very, very fine cuts because it'd be easy to go too far. Just before we attach the head, we're going to put a slight radius on the top of the mallet like this one. You don't have to, you can keep it square. I just like the look of it. And uh, a lot of traditional mallets have that same curve. Take the middle. We can also come in and add a chamfer while we're at this stage. And on the face, I'm just going to come back with some 120 grit sandpaper. Each of these faces, and then some 240. And on these chamfers, lightly run the 240 over them, and then end up rounding them over. So instead of them being a square chamfer, they're a rounded chamfer, which I find looks much nicer. Before I go ahead and attach the handle, what I'm going to do is actually just saw a little wedge shape in the top here. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful because we've got them laminated this way. But the saw cut's going to come down pretty much on the glue line. Now, glue lines are generally stronger than the timber, so there's probably no problem there. And I'm only going to be putting a small wedge in right at the top because I'm going to glue the rest of it. So the glue is going to be holding most of it and the wedge is just going to ensure that the top won't pop off. So I already know that the elongated part of the handle is going like this one. The elongated part's going this way. So the wedge has got to go this way so it doesn't want to split apart the top of the mallet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
And there you have it. We have the handle attached. And now we can get on to shaping the rest of the handle. So to do that, we go back to the spoke shave as I did before. And you just keep shaping it until it fits your hand the way you like it. can see that little chamfer on here. It's a little bit rough. I'm sure yours is going to come out much nicer than that. When it comes to the angles on the face of your mallet, how you chamfer them, the shape of your handle and everything, that really comes down to personal preference. So I've shaped it the way I like to hold it and the way it feels comfortable in my hand, so I use it one particular way. Although there's two faces, I tend to just use the one face, so it's not too much of a problem. I just like taper it and shape it to my hand and I suggest you do the same. So obviously we're now going to finish this off and today we're going to finish this just with the paste wax that I made in the previous video. If you haven't seen that I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So let's get to it. So there you have it folks, that's how you build your own wooden mallet. And the process is not too difficult, however you'll be able to make use of a lot of the skills that were built up over previous videos that will go into making your first tool that you'll be able to use in your own workshop for the rest of your life. So if you like this video please consider liking and subscribing, check out my Facebook, Instagram and Patreon pages. Bye for now.